What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? My name is Josiah, also known as Dungeon Dad, and I just made a recent discovery. And by discovery, I mean I just realized why am I not doing this? See, in the spirit of being a dumbass on the internet, I figure I should have my keyboard hooked up so that at any point during an episode, I can hit myself with a real-time sound music sting. Because why not? Also in the spirit of being a dumbass on the internet, today we are gonna talk about something D&D related. That is right. I am of course talking about Monster of the Week, the show where we dig up old creatures from past editions of D&D and bring them to light for use in your current fifth edition game. And this week is no exception. We are, of course, talking about the defacer. What is a defacer, you ask? Well, a defacer is a doppelganger or other type of shapeshifter who has regrettably died in one way or another and been brought back to life as an undead creature. Except instead of being a regular zombie, it comes back as a faceless humanoid shape that has a bunch of screaming faces circling around it and those faces are actually souls. <laughs> Why? Why does this exist? But here's the thing, those faces swirling around this little fella are not just random spectral faces that happen to just look like that. Those souls used to belong to someone and when they were torn away that person's face also gets taken away. Hence why it's called a defacer. Real clever on that one. So no, this creature does not draw graffiti, it does not put up stupid stencils of Calvin peeing on thing that the truck driver doesn't like, this defacer defaces people in the most literal way possible. So today we're going to talk about just what this thing can do in combat, and of course how we can use it in our D&D games. It is also worth mentioning, as always, there is a 5th edition conversion of this monster done by yours truly, which you can find in the description below if you want to follow along while we're talking about it, or you just decide you want to use the monster when you're done listening to me talk about it. In any case, let's take a look at some... I had to start recording again because my camera ran out of storage. Anyways, so when this creature gets into combat, it has a couple of slam attacks that it can make every round. Except those aren't just regular slam attacks, this attack is called Deface. And I'll give you one guess what it does. Essentially what happens here is if and when the Defacer hits another target, that creature has to make a Wisdom save. And if and when they fail that Wisdom save, they are stunned for one round. Mechanically, that's all that really happens here, but the perspective and flavor of what actually happens is terrifying. One of the faces that was circling around the defacer leaps away from it and latches onto the face of the creature that was just hit by the slam attack. That soul then, temporarily, while it's latched onto that creature for the one round, replaces that creature's face, and I'll give you one guess what it does. Here's a hint, it involves screaming and pleading for the sweet release of death which it knows will probably never come. Great! So that's horribly unsettling, but that aside, the creature is also capable of using an attack called Soul Lash, which also is one of those things that does pretty much what it sounds like. It extends one of the souls that it has bonded to its body, and that soul reaches out grabs a creature, does some necrotic damage, and tries to pull them closer to the defacer. Because here's the thing, this defacer has all these souls floating around it. Each one of them is represented in the form of a face, kind of on a spectral little doobly bobble. And those faces being trapped souls obviously don't want to be there, so that is very much reflected when they get an opportunity to speak. Speaking of which, all the souls surrounding this thing are constantly crying out in agony and fear. Who would have thought? And this actually lends to the Defacer's most brutal ability, which is called Chorus of Souls. Now this isn't something it actively has to do, this is just happening at all times around it. Literally any creature that can hear and is within 60 feet of this thing is just straight up frightened. There's no save you have to make, there's no way to avoid it, you just become frightened of the Defacer. Now of course, if you're a paladin, that's a joke to you. Or if you have some other way to counteract fear effects, also good planning ahead. But in the first random encounter when this thing appears in your campaign, or if it happens to be the only encounter and the party isn't aware of this, 
that can be devastating because you're essentially locking down an area of the battlefield because when you're frightened of something, you cannot move closer to it. And speaking of battlefield control, these bastards are very slippery. They have an ability shared by some other creatures like, you know, earth elementals called earth glide, which if you're not aware, allows them to basically just move themselves through the earth as long as it's non-magical or unworked. So this guy can pop out of the wall of a cavern like the Kool-Aid man, except without all of the smashy smashy, but still just as terrifying and dangerous. And if they do manage to knock someone down to zero hit points, Fun begins. As a bonus action, they can use an ability called Steel Face, which literally removes that person's face and their soul and brings it into the possession of the defacer. That person's face is left completely smooth, their bone structure, everything, teeth, whatever, none of it is discernible anymore. They are just like a blank canvas from here to here, just dropped on the ground. And then what happens is just so fun. The defacer's face, or lack thereof, takes on the appearance of the face that they just stole. So I'm sure you're already thinking of a million ways that that could go horribly wrong for our party of adventurers. And that person who was unconscious and has their face stolen is of course instantly killed, and they cannot be brought back to life because their soul is in the possession of a defacer. So how do we solve this problem? Well, short of casting a wish spell, the only way to bring that person back to life is to kill the defacer within three days. If that happens, the soul returns to the body and that person is stable with zero hit points, and then eventually they'll wake up. And just for what it's worth here, in the original monsters text, it was only one day. I have changed it in my version to be three days, just because I think that allows for some more interesting tomfoolery, but we'll get into that when it comes to plot hooks. Now, if the party is able to kill this thing, it releases all of the souls that had trapped. So even if they don't kill it within those three days, they can still destroy this creature and then bring their friend back to life with some sort of restorative magic. But at that point, the window of Revivify has long since passed, so you're looking at actual resurrection spells, which can be hard to come by and pretty expensive. But that said, with the horrific abilities of this thing aside, it's probably time to talk about some. So aside from scaring the absolute goddamn pling-plongs out of any mortal creature that these dumb bitches come across, they have a few other applications that we will get into. First of which, the stolen face. If they are able to remove the face from a party member, that creates a perfect opportunity for a side quest that you can employ where the party has a timer and only a few days to hunt down this creature and destroy it. That can be really interesting. Sucks for the person who's dead though, but they can roll up a temporary PC while they do that. However, if you want this to be less player killish, I mean, that could just happen and that's a great way to twist it, but if you don't want to plan to kill your players, which is not something you should really do as a DM, you could always have it happen to an important NPC. That would be a great plot line for a mid-ish level party where someone in town who's very important to the main story is discovered dead and their face is completely gone. Through a bit of research or maybe a scholarly ally who's either an NPC or a party member even, they could discover that this is the work of a defacer. So then the party, of course, has a time crunch where they have to hunt down and destroy this abomination so they can bring back to life whichever important NPC was killed. Another really interesting thing about defacers, and by interesting I mean horrifically sad, is that where most undead kind of lust for that kind of life essence, like they have that hunger that's insatiable. Defacers have that, but not for brains or anything so simple. They have a hunger for identity. See, as an undead creature, when they're raised, they lose their ability to shape change, which they would have had in life as a doppelganger, for example. So they can't choose who they are anymore, and they just see themselves as this blank slate, and that drives them to madness. So, when they steal someone's face and they can assume an identity even just for a few days, that's the only time they're really at peace. Now, defacers aren't completely animalistic or stupid, so they're not going to just go around killing people every day. I mean, they might if it's a big enough city and they think they can get away with it. But something that they will often do is go into graveyards, use their earth glide ability to literally just pass under the ground and steal the face of someone who was buried within the past couple days and literally just hang out in that person's coffin or directly underneath it and just enjoy having an identity for a while. Other fun fact about this, the spectral chorus of souls that surrounds them specifically says it can be heard through solid rock and earth as if it were moving through air. 
Meaning that if you go to a graveyard where one of these things is active and it's just stealing the souls of people who are buried there and enjoying living in their identity temporarily, you're just going to hear constant wailing and crying and screaming kind of all around you coming from everywhere at once. And that is creepy as fuck. Like you could have a graveyard that has a horrible reputation for being this haunted place because one of these things is just in the area all the time, sucking the souls of those that are buried in some major town. Because the defacer doesn't really care about killing its victim. It doesn't crave death. It craves just having that identity for a temporary amount of time. And I think that's a really interesting theme to explore in a monster. It makes you almost pity them in a way. But that aside, these guys suck. And I'm gonna tell you why. Imagine if you have a lich or powerful necromancer Directly in front of him are two Bodax just doing their thing where if they look at you, you take tons of damage or lose levels or whatever it is in 5th edition. It sucks. They just have to look at you and you take damage. That kind of is a dangerous encounter. But then imagine in front of them, you have two of these defacers just hanging out. Anything that gets close is frightened and is going to have to push through that aura of fear just to get to them. Meanwhile, you have the Bodax just staring you down, causing you to take whatever type of damage they cause. And then behind them, you've got a Lich or something casting spells. That is just a murderous encounter. Even without the Bodax, say you have these guys paired with a powerful spellcaster, that's so dangerous because it prevents the party, especially the frontline fighters, from getting to the most vulnerable and the most damage dealing member of the opposition. And that's what a smart necromancer would do. To take that train of thought one step further, that would make defacers and by extension doppelganger bodies, which defacers can be made from, extremely valuable. Maybe you have a lich or just a regular necromancer who's an aspiring lich or whatever contract out the party to go and get this doppelganger body that he knows is buried somewhere or even to kill a doppelganger and bring it back to him. From the party's perspective, they're probably thinking, well, doppelgangers are usually pretty suspect and there might be an evil enemy that they're going after. So even though they don't fully trust this weird necromancer guy, they kind of don't really have a reason not to do this either. So they do it, not realizing that they're unleashing a potentially much worse evil upon the local area. In any case, thematically and mechanically, there's a ton of room to play with these guys, and I think they are such awesome monsters. So if you've ever had one of these used on you in the past, or if you have plans on using these on your unfortunate poor players in the near future, let me know about it. Leave a comment. Get at me on Discord. Get at me on Twitter. Whatever your preferred method of communication is, I love hearing your guys' stories and ideas, so please do tell me about them. And also that said, in all those same places I just mentioned, if you have a monster you'd like to see covered on this show at some point in the future, get at me and I will add it to the list. So I want to give a shout out to Overhaven on Discord for this week's suggestion. It ended up being an awesome monster and I'm probably going to use it in the near future with my players, so I'll post an update somewhere and we'll see how that goes. Anyways. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. And I'll see you in the next video. Until then.